Hi, I'm Tom. I work at the Hut Group. Um, I'm going to talk about DevOps, um, what DevOps, why there's a need for DevOps, um, and how that relates to agile software development. Um, and hopefully you'll get some good info on how to have a good DevOps relationship from this. Let's first of all ask, how many people here are developers? How many people would class themselves as working in operations? None, okay, so I know how to bias this talk immediately. Um, how many people are managers who would like a good DevOps relationship? Just one. How many are managers who want a bad DevOps relationship? <laughs> okay, um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of, oh, that's gone backwards, that's the end. A little bit of background for me personally so you understand where I come from and the experiences that I've had in development. So my development career started a little bit before the Agile Manifesto was published, working for a business-to-business -business company who uh, did everything by catalogue and we were the first guys there building an e-commerce website and um, sort of chaotic development, no real structure. We could do what we liked, we developed how we wanted, but we had to make sure the website ran well. So we tended to do releases at sort of three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. Not a lot of fun having to do that. Um, I'll get these the right way around. Um, after that, I moved to a small startup company where the four or five of us, so we were doing the development, we were managing all the infrastructure, having to do all the uh, transitioning everything that we developed through to the live environment. We had to have the little uh, phone calls in the middle of the night to say the servers had broken. Uh, we also had to do the customer support, so uh, well aware that we have to make sure everything's working well and understanding how the product works. After that, I moved on to a much larger company where there was, um, you know, the company had been around for a while by the time I joined. So there was a big development team and a separate operations team. So this is the sort of experience you get in, again, in bigger companies. Two different groups of people who are working for the same company, hopefully with the same sort of goals, but you've got to transition from one team to the other when you're developing the software. Now, working at the hut. So we've been around since about 2006, We're growing rapidly, 2004, growing very rapidly. Um, and I joined last year, there was a small operations team, um, a few developers around, and we've grown quite a lot in the last year. So we've got a development team now, which has grown from around five or six people up to around 35 people. Operations again has increased from around five people, and there's about 10, 12 people there. And we're sort of going through that transition from a small startup company to a much bigger company. And what we want to make sure is that we keep a good relationship between development and operations. So, some of this is kind of based on the truth, but it's a little bit fictional. And it's how you might end up in a very sort of unpleasant situation. You start off as a small startup and everything's kind of cool and exciting. You're there, it's developing during the day, building new features. You're transitioning through onto the live environment. Customers are using them. Sometimes they fail. You've got to go and fix things. You do your bug fixes. You get them onto the live environment quite quickly. Servers, you've got to manage the servers. You've got to get all the monitoring in place. You've got to make sure that your website is up 24 hours a day. That means not only have you got to develop new things during the day, but also at night you're getting phone calls saying something's broken. Can you go and fix it? You're getting all the support calls. Eventually you feel absolutely exhausted, but the company's growing, so you get more people and you get more people on. And some of those people are interested in monitoring that hardware and you can get people in there who can look after the live environment, who can stay up all night, waiting for that beep to go off and flicking little switches to make the, sure the servers stay alive. And you can sleep and you can come in during the day and do your development. And it's all sort of kind of nice. But now you have one set of people setting up all these servers and they set them up in a slightly different way and they've got different configuration, different permissions. And no longer are you the sort of small group of developers who are also relieving, releasing changes on transitioning into the live environment. But you have to hand that over to someone else who's got the right security credentials to put it onto the live environment. And sometimes, you know, um, when I first doing releases, four o'clock in the morning, I don't fancy doing that anymore. So it's okay, we can still release at four o'clock in the morning, but we'll give it to the operations team to do. Now, how are they going to transition those changes into a live environment? I'm going to give them a document that tells them what to do, what buttons to press, and everything like that. And most of the time, that's great. It works fine. But sometimes it goes wrong, OK? So they need to roll it back. 
and I come in in the morning and they say, well, you gave me this documentation, but you know what, we tried to release it, it didn't work. Next time you need to give me more documentation just in case this happens, just in case this happens. So next time I've got to, uh, I want to transition all my changes through to the live environment. I've got to write some more documentation, explain more about what needs to be done. And I think uh, Francis talked about Yagni. I have to start thinking about those what ifs, what ifs, and I get more and more documentation that has to be handed over. And that's great. And the company's growing and we're making more money. And sometimes these releases, you know, no matter how good I am at development, there are still some things that don't quite go expected uh, as planned. So now I've got a huge document and it's got lots of information in, but there's still a risk in every release. So now, because any downtime is really critical to that company, I have to go away and get someone important to sign it off to say, I accept the risk in this release. So not only do I have to produce lots of documentation, I've got to chase around the company and find lots of people to sign off. They're not going to read the document, they're just going to ask me, have I written everything properly? Yes, of course I have, don't worry. Okay, I'll sign it, I'll sign it. You end up with a huge document, a service transition document. Its initials are STD, <laughs> okay? It's something that no one wants to have. Everyone ends up passing it around somehow though. It's unpleasant, horrible. No one wants this, get rid of it. One of the key problems, once your company has grown large enough, you've got an operations team whose main responsibility is to keep the live systems stable, not changing. And if you're in the other side of the company doing development, your key purpose is to change everything. And that's where a lot of tension can build up. One team wants things to stay stable, the other team just wants to change it all the time. And Whilst that's a sort of often a key goal, it's not the main goal for everyone. Everyone's working for the same company. As a developer, you do want stable software. You want it to go live. You don't want lots of bugs in it. Um, one of the good ideas is, as your company grows, Deepak's going to hate me for this because he's one of our key uh, developers who is on call, is do keep the developers on call through the night. Yeah, part of the operations team. There are common goals, keep people working together. So we have a development team, we have an operations team. They do have common goals. Understand, find those common goals and work together. So the Agile Manifesto, 10 years old, 11 years old, talks about individuals and interactions over processes and tools. And in where we have got Agile, we've, we've got good at that. We understand that there's value in those processes and tools, but we value the individuals and inter interactions more. Working software over comprehensive documentation. Yeah? Working software is great. Comprehensive documentation is a real pain, but you know, sometimes some documentation is needed. But working software that you've got to development done and you haven't transitioned to a live working environment that's not really working software. It's not producing any revenue. It's not helping you. And if you're in a bigger company with a separate operations department, they're part of the solution to get your working software live. Um, a bigger company with an operations department, they'll use, or they'll often use ITIL. It's a set of best practices. H who's familiar with ITIL? Yeah, okay. I'm not very familiar with ITIL, <laughs> so hopefully I won't make anything really horrible up here. But again, from what my understanding of ITIL is it's a set of best practices. Okay? You pick the right best practices for your company. You don't have to do everything, and it doesn't say you have to produce huge amounts of documentation. Okay? So some of the key things to understand from the development point of view, and where you have common shared goals with the, uh, with the operations guys, a little bit of understanding how they work. So they have event management, which is about um, any change to a service that's going on. Okay? Sometimes that leads to an incident. And an incident is where something's gone wrong, it needs to fix. You need to get the right people in the right place to fix it. But a key part of that 
is working on what's the most important incident. And how do you decide what's the most important incident? Hopefully, if you've got one, that's it. Okay, but if there's a few things, you need to understand and talk from the operations point of view to the rest of the business, explain what's going on, understand what's going on, find out what's the priority. As agile developers, we're keen on this customer collaboration. This is exactly what the ITIL thing is saying. Operations are going to talk to the business, find out the highest priorities. Problem management is about managing a problem, something that's wrong, going to the root cause of these incidents, finding out how to fix them, how to solve them. Now, if it's a software bug, this is the developer's area of responsibility to work with operations and fix it. Okay, so you're building good lines of communication. In agile development, we try and ensure that at all times we have software that works by putting in acceptance tests, by putting in unit tests that give us some sort of guarantee that things are going to work. Talk to the operations guys about what you're doing in terms of ensuring the quality. Request management, again, about understanding the demand that comes in uh, and how to reliably and predictably deliver business value. Okay, it's what Agile is all about, delivering business value. The operations guys want the same thing. Transition management, it's not about resisting change, it's about making sure that a change that you've developed transitions into a live environment successfully, that it's supportable, it's reliable, that every time you transition something from development through to live, it happens and it works. It's reliable, it's repeatable. And continuous improvement. Don't just build a process and make it rigid and say you've always got to follow it and jump through the hoops. Find out what's working, measure it, change it. This is all about, it's all built into uh, Agile software. We keep doing retrospectives, we look back at what we've done, how do we improve it? ISIL has the same thing. So we have common shared goals. And that means we can come together as one team. Um, we have not just DevOps, but business DevOps. Okay, So every day we have, uh, again, moving more towards a Kanban structure in terms of issue management. So we have business representatives, development representatives, and operations representatives all together every morning to talk about what's the highest priority, what should we be doing, how do we get the right development resource working together to get the changes into the live environment.